Hey guys. All right. This episode is really personal to me. I requested this topic because it's something that's so, so deeply personal. I feel like it's, this is going to apply to men and women alike for sure. I'm going to hit on the women's angle because I coach all women and I am a woman and have been through a lot of deep processing on this, but it applies as well as this is body image. This is how we see ourselves. This is not only how we see ourselves when we look at ourselves in the mirror, but also how we see ourselves inside our thoughts every day. The little things that we say to ourselves, maybe we're not even aware of, but like, what is our self image? How do we perceive ourselves? And this is, you know, L wrote a book called confident as fuck. So, I mean, this is definitely <laughs> something that you have delved deep to d- deep into. And so I'll let, I'll let you start off. But first I want to start off by talking about like, what do you think is at the core at the root of a poor self image? Well, it's clearly the thoughts you're thinking about yourself, but those can be ignited by your childhood, by, you know, friends you're hanging out with, right? All the stuff we've talked about before. Um, So again, it's like, where are you getting those thoughts about yourself? Because we can change our thoughts, right? Everybody can. So it's a matter of like, well, where did they come from? You know what I mean? Like, when did it start? Yeah. I mean, like, was your mom always being like, don't eat that, you'll get fat or, you know, I mean, these are things will build up over time that kind of subconsciously come in and give you a Mm -hmm. sense of, you know, I remember, I remember like my mom and dad, they dieted and stuff like that and it would work, but they were very conscious. My whole family was very conscious about like what you eat and things like that. And I'm not saying that that like breeded an issue for me, but I will say that moving forward in life, I think like, you know, watching my mom struggle with some weight stuff or things like that could have probably mm-hmm. contributed to some of mm-hmm. my eating stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, not to, not to blame or anything, but it's just like, okay, you know, your awareness, your, your awareness. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're so right. Cause so, so many women that I've worked with, I can't say how often it's like when I'm like, when's the first time you remember feeling like that? And they're like, Oh, when my mom said, maybe I would, you know, I was so cute, but I would look so much better if I just lost 10 pounds or maybe I should get on a program or maybe I should be careful. But, and it's like those deep rooted things. It's like one thing I think that we forget is that so many of our thoughts are not our own. And we have adopted them as our own. We think because we were told at seven years old or 10 years old or whatever, somebody told us something and it cut, it cut to the core. And now we've adopted it as our own way of thinking. It's like, it's almost sweet in a way, but it's got to be dealt with with maturity. You know what I mean? It's like you took that on at face value as a little kid of like, okay, I'm like this. I need to work on this. And you believed that thought all the way up until 30, 40, 50 years old, you're still believing that thought. And so I think it's, you're exactly right. It's coming back to the root of when did you first start feeling that? What is the earliest memory that you have of feeling like that? I, there's so much, so much, um, treasure there. If we can really dig into that. And then treasure now in the trauma <laughs> there is, there is. And then now if we can look at it and say, okay, okay. All right. I get it. Way back when I was a little kid, I started thinking about myself like that. Is that really true? You know, and this all comes from the work of Byron Katie, a lot of what I'm saying right now. And this is why it's been so powerful because it does start to 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 change your self-talk when you can look at why you started even thinking this in the first place. And is it even true? You know, and at first you might think it is true. It's like, yeah, I would look better if I lost 20 pounds or whatever. But first getting to the emotional core, I think is the first step to being able to release that because I think for me with with self image, um, it's, this is, this is something honestly that I meditate on a lot. I think about this a lot because I'm like, okay, I'm trying to imagine myself right now, 70 pounds overweight, like 70 pounds heavier than I am right now. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go walk into my mirror and I'm going to have like my belly hanging down and all sorts of rolls and cellulite. And, you know, my face is like inflated and looking different than it does right now. And I'm going to go tell myself to go and look in that mirror and love what I see, love what it, love it, you know? And it's like, it just doesn't feel real. It doesn't it feel so right. Fake. It yeah. does. It doesn't feel right. And I, and I've thought about this a lot because I'm like, I have been overweight, you know, I haven't been 70 pounds, but I've been 40 pounds overweight. And I know when I lost those 40 pounds, not only did, yeah, I felt like I looked better. Absolutely. And I think most of the world agreed, but it wasn't just that I felt better. Like I felt way better. Like it feels freaking good to lose that excess baggage and not be carrying it around. So I think like, you know, well, what I, about too the um, this idea of like, because um, I know we'll be all over the place here, but this idea too of 
like the the body image thing i, I don't know it's, it's weird so sometimes like it's profession of being an actor can throw you into that because like I remember being in in a casting office um you know I would intern for casting directors for free and you'd hear a phone call with an agent and a casting director and the casting director would say things like yeah she's great but she's at an eight and I need her at a two so like you hear this and then you're like oh my god and that's really what spawned me going like crazy Mm -hmm. over working out and doing all this stuff that led me to horrible problems we've already talked about that on other shows so you know demand of a job like models or you know Mm -hmm. public eye that can do it um or also too i just remember like like looking in the mirror when you're oh my god this is the other thing about body image is a tough one i was really fat and hypothyroid and i mean it was so bad i mean oh my god it was so bad i was so ashamed and embarrassed when I like would muster up the energy to go to a yoga class and like how fat and bloated I was and I was going to the yoga like I shouldn't have been doing this but I was going to the yoga every day and uh, it was the only energy I could expel for the whole day and I would again this was my projection I'd feel so judged by everyone because Mm -hmm. I was really judging myself but I felt so judged like they were like I felt like they were all probably talking to themselves saying she's coming in here every day and she's like so fucking she keeps getting fat you know what I mean like I Mm -hmm. I I brought that into me. No one said that or looked at me mm-hmm. in a disgusting way. I projected right. that upon myself from them. I didn't feel good. And it was really hard to look in the mirror at my bloated fat body and feel anything other than total despair. <clears throat> I think it's better to always like, it's not like, I'm a millionaire now. That's not going to feel real as an affirmation, but being like, I'm on my way to becoming mm-hmm. more abundant or looking in the mirror and going, I love you and you are mm-hmm. on your way to being healthy and happy. Like you're mm-hmm. on your way or you're in the process of, because that's true. It feels mm-hmm. so fake to just be like, you're doing great. You look great the way you are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, if mm-hmm. you're a parent, like so at times when I was struggling with teenage fat stuff, it probably was hypothyroid stuff I didn't know. But mm-hmm. at the time, mm-hmm. you know, I'd cry to my mom and I'd be like, I'm so fat. I can't feel this. God bless my mother. You're beautiful. You have a beautiful body. You're gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was, you know, but that also, you know, it was nice to hear, but it didn't ring true for me. I'm not sure what she could have done better there. Maybe it would be like, well, listen, if you're upset about this, maybe we can look into this or that. That might have created more issues. I don't know. But if you're a parent, yes, I mean, you've got to really watch what you say. And, you know, your children are beautiful no matter what, and you'll help them with whatever. But, you know, that that's a, that's a tough line, too, because a comment like a, an opposite comment can really kill the soul of a kid. Yeah, definitely, man. Thanks for those insights. I think for me, um, you know, I can definitely relate to that. I remember one time when I was really getting into the fitness thing, I was at a lifetime fitness and it was just like all, it just looked like fitness models everywhere. Like I just felt like I was in the land of fitness models and Utah's, Utah's kind of a vain state, right? Like it's, there's a lot of pretty people here for there sure. Are. Go, I, don't, well, how does that, life- I just learned that last year. I go, I'm like, who are all these really beautiful well, people? Yeah. Utah? It's like the number one plastic surgery cap capital oh, of the country. Okay. It's also, it's just, there's a lot of, um, there is a culture of perfectionism in Utah for sure. Um, and yeah, so beauty is a, is a focus. And so here I am and I've never, I would say I'm not naturally like that. Like I didn't really, I was always just kind of a tomboy. I still, you know, I'm usually on Instagram. I don't have makeup on. Like, I just don't care that much. Like <laughs> I have to try to care, <laughs> but, um, but if I remember being in this lifetime fitness and I was, you know, overweight and I had like dorky clothes on and, you know, I just definitely didn't feel like I fit in. And I remember, I remember so clearly just thinking everybody starts somewhere, girl, you good for you. That's everybody great. starts somewhere. All these people started somewhere. So it's, um, the, our ego, our ego doesn't like to accept that we're not where we want to be. But if you can keep that positive self-talk of, it, I, for me, you can find self-love exactly where you're at one by appreciating deeply on a level, what your body does for you every day. I think having a written gratitude practice for me of like, I, I do it every morning and, and often things with my body come up. I'm like, yesterday was the immune system. I'm like, it's freaking amazing. How cool is the immune system? It does so much more than just protect us from getting sick. Like it also helps um, decrease aging and increases longevity. It's like really cool, you know? And I think when we start to have gratitude for all the things our body is doing for us and how hard it's trying and dependent on us to make good choices for it so it can get us where we want to go and be healthy and be thriving, that can get us self-love exactly right where we're at when we actually show some freaking gratitude for these amazing vessels that we are in. They are the like the 
the, you know, cream of the crop of all creations, in my opinion. And that's that that gratitude can really help you um, funnel power and from wherever you're starting. And then I also think, though, that it is okay to be real and raw with where you're at. And if you are not happy with the way your body is currently performing or responding or looking, it is completely in your power to change that and knowing that. And it's it comes through a process of learning how to coach yourself, learning how to be patient, learning how to stay and choose empowerment, stay in empowerment, choose empowerment every single day. You know, we it's the emotional derailing that you keep doing that that's defeating that process that you're on. Like I'm on a, you know, I'm on all sorts of journeys. I'm on a business journey. I'm on a health journey. And it's like, if I just sat there and was like, I can't do this. It's too hard. I, yesterday I should have done this and I didn't, I did this instead. Like that would be so self defeat. I choose not to, to live in those thoughts. I choose to focus on all of the positive forward movement, all the momentum. I focus on that. And that, that helps me stay in that positive mindset of exactly what you're saying is I love you and you got this and you're going, you're going baby, you're doing this. But I think, um, you know, the body positivity m- movement, I'm not so sure about that, that movement. Um, because well, and, I, and I want to, and I think you'll spawn yeah. off from what I'm going to say, which is I kind of always admired in a way, like I you, appreciate what they're trying to do. I appreciate it. Right. And I always, I, and actually, so I always admire, like, you know, when you see like a very, very, very large overweight obese person and they're like tank top they no shame they're like i'm gorgeous I, I was always like oh my god i wish I could. yeah <laughs> like like a, now i would argue that they're they're not fully comfortable in their skin because no one really is at that weight but i always admired that and i remember looking at these like seriously large people and then hear me with just like a little bit extra padding or whatever it was at certain times in my life and feeling like i had to cover it all up and i always kind of wish i could be <laughs> i mean i've mm-hmm. kind of become that person where i'm mm-hmm. like whatever i don't care mm-hmm. but and also i live in the land of perfection as well right los angeles mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you know and i i really admired that but however i know that you're going to piggyback on this which is about the positivity of that like should we really be accepting that embracing that because that is not a state of usually good health Mm -hmm. often Mm -hmm. if you take a lot of blood work on those people it's not going to be good sometimes it is so you can't judge you can have a skinny fit person right we could take your blood work right now and be like i don't want to be her damn she's inflamed like that's possible too so we're not saying all thin fit people are healthy that is so not true no but i don't mm. Why are we embracing an epidemic over here to some degree too? So let's, I know you're going to piggyback on this, on this positive body positivity, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I mean is like, what is healthy, you know, and you're absolutely right. There's plenty of women that look like something that walked out of a magazine and they are not healthy. They are surviving off off of caffeine and that's it. You know, like that's their diet is caffeine. Cigarettes and cocaine. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. So that's not always the the best, but I do think that, um, I think sometimes we can overcompensate in an area in which we are actually feeling lack and we feel a need to show everyone that we're feeling so great in that area. You know, when it's, I would, I would encourage anybody like it's wherever you're at with your body. Like I would say my body fluctuates a lot, you know, sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm leaner and sometimes I'm a little heavier and I just kind of go back and forth and I let it roll with what's going on in my life. Um, I know that I'm very healthy, right? Like I do the blood work. I do the testing. I, I am active. I eat well. I'm not psychotic about it. Like I'll eat a freaking chip or, you know, oh. of some, of some cake or something. Sometimes I'm not like psycho about every little thing that goes in my body. I feel like I'm in a very, very good place. And I think that I, um, coming to that place though, man, I had to go on a journey to get here because I wasn't happy with where I was at before. I didn't, I didn't, feel good in my own skin. I couldn't move the way I wanted to. I didn't enjoy what I saw in the mirror. And I think it's okay to accept that and know that you have the power to change that if you want to. You don't have to. Maybe you're a little more full figured and you need to learn to love and be- see the beauty in, uh, in, in yourself. And I did. I have gone through positive affirmations every single freaking morning in the mirror, looking myself in the eye saying you are beautiful to the point that I 
finally was like, I would smile and be like, you are freaking beautiful, you know, like, and it's good to get, it's good to get to that place. Um, but it's also, I think true empowerment is knowing that you are a creator and you can create whatever it is you choose to create. So if it's really freaking important to you to be super fit, you can do it. You can do it. And you- stop saying things like, I'm just big boned or this, right? You know, those kind of comments too, which are just like, listen, if you don't like it, don't pass it off. There is a way to change it. There yeah, really is. You, right. you don't, don't settle for these answers like, well, everyone in my family is big. Well, everyone in your family is maybe not healthy or on the right diet exercise paradigm. <laughs> like, You know what I mean? Like, right. And again, you may be full figured naturally to some degree and have to embrace right. some of those curves. But there's a way to, yeah, gosh, you know, I've had so many issues with body image. Listen, when I was struggling with hypothyroidism, I was fat. Th- these are the things that I remember. Like, oh, and I just want to make me cry. I, I, I'm on my clothes. I mean, I just want to cry right now. Like, like. Tara, I just, I had to wear sweatpants. Like, I didn't have any clothes that fit me. I took a pair of jeans, and I tried to pull them over my uh, legs, and I couldn't even get above the calf. Do you know how horrible that is? That's like trying on an Mm -hmm. 11-year-old's pair of pants. That's how fat Mm -hmm. I was, okay? Now, those same pair of jeans, I still have them. I can slip them right up. And I remember being like, I'm going to keep these. And I'm, and when I feel ready, because we all know what we look like in our body. So let's start with Mm -hmm. get off the freaking scale. You know, mm-hmm. you might want to start there, but then stop because you can lose three pounds with a great poop in the morning. I, I, I no. know. So, so get off the scale. If you do anything, you look at body percentage fat. In fact, when I've gotten my body analyzed over the years, because I stopped looking at scales, I did once in the past several years when I thought I was where I was at. We all know what we look like and feel in our underwear and our damn bikini. That's what Stop matters. Stop the scale. It's exactly. going to ruin you. The scale is going to ruin your whole program. But I remember always having again here's the thing like i have to lose weight i have to lose weight i need to lose weight Mm, you're always going to be in a position then where you need to lose weight so words have Mm -hmm. power too how about Mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to releasing this weight or you know Mm -hmm. i'm so excited about becoming healthier uh we have to change the way we look at because every day you get in the mirror and you're like damn it and now granted i had a metabolic disorder that was really preventing any efforts i made Mm -hmm. so i didn't really have control right but i but when i went the second time with the second bout i knew that i had gotten over the first time and i was nicer on myself and i did Mm -hmm. the I did the, you know, health affirmations and like meditation CDs and stuff like that. And I was more loving because I had once solved it. So I kind of was like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. I can do it again. And mm-hmm. so I was a lot nicer to myself. I wish I had adopted the, the, the second part, <laughs> you know, the first part, but I didn't, I didn't know better. And I didn't know about any of the work and positivity and mindset stuff that, you know, you and I are into now. I just didn't know that then. But I remember how depressing it is. You know, like you don't want to go out on dates. You know, you're embarrassed to be seen. You're hiding every part of yourself. I, um, mm-hmm. I have a friend right now who I can tell is not happy with her body, and the reason is is because every time we go walking or stuff, she's got the thing tied around her waist, you know, to hide her her butt. And like even with me, and we're like hiking with nobody, and. I see that kind of thing happen and it makes me sad because I know, I know what it's mm-hmm. like to be mm-hmm. there where you feel like, or, or, oh my God, summer's coming. Holy mm-hmm. shit, no. Mm-hmm. Because summer's mm-hmm. the worst time to be fat. Oh my God, it was awful. And so, I mean, I've, I've cried all day, every day for months and months with body image stuff when I was going through that. And it really, it feels bad. Well, it's hypothyroidism. It's not just weight gain. It's a mm-hmm. double whammy. Mm-hmm. But either way, it just will crush a lot of self-esteem. And it takes, a, it takes this work we're talking about to get mm-hmm. your mind right. Mm-hmm. I think you hit on something so key there. And I sympathize with the hypothyroid because I've worked with many and currently work with many hypothyroid clients. And you hit on something so key there, but it applies to everyone. And that's the first successful stage of a transformation is healing. Because you can, you, I mean, that's right. you can maybe be in such a terrible place mentally that you can white knuckle yourself into starving. You know, there's women that do that or whatever, but like <laughs> they don't end up where they wanted to be and they never, they're never there. They're never okay with where they wanted to go. So the first stage, whether you actually have metabolic issues or you just keep spinning your wheels. And I remember being, I remember thinking, can I please just like hire some sort of personal trainer to come live with me 24 seven and like everybody wants that (laughs) and not let me mess this up because I can't trust myself and I can't make good decisions and and like, what's what, how come all these other people can figure it out and I can't, what's wrong with me and blah, blah, blah. First stage is healing. 
the first stage is healing. So for me, I needed a whole hell of a lot of mindset healing, right? I needed a lot of paradigm shifts. And that's why that a lot, most of the work that I do with my coaching clients is this, is the mindset Absolutely. stuff, is understanding like how to get your mind right or also how to get your body right, how to heal. And I, one of my, one of my favorite sayings is there is no try, just do. There is no trying. So trying, like, we're not trying, we're doing, right? And staying in that powerful mindset. So for you, you did do that. You did, you had hypothyroidism and you took care of business by going on your healing journey. And you continued on the healing journey because you could have been like, oh, pass, free card. I have hypothyroidism. I have to be fat for the rest of my life. There's nothing I can do about this. Nope. You know what you did? You freaking healed. You healed and you became obsessive, didn't you? You became obsessive on that journey to healing. And this is another thing I want to talk about because this came yeah. up on my coaching call this morning. It is, there's almost this, um, because I think so many people have gone on diet after diet after diet or counting macros or calories and getting obsessed and all this stuff. There's almost this, um, adverse reaction to it of like, no, 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 no. The right way is I shouldn't have to like worry about this stuff too much. Like it, you know, and it's like, no, 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 no. If you are at, if you were at a, and you want to get to Z, you're going to have to be obsessed. In, in any of your life, like if you're going to get really, really good at something and go through monster change, it is going to have to be a borderline obsession for you. It doesn't mean it has to be unhealthy and self-loathing and beating yourself up. It can be fun and exciting and full of discovery and learning and growth, you know, and that's exactly what your journey was on the hypothyroid thing. Like it was this journey. It was an epic journey, well, really, yeah. of you going to doctors and being like, okay, hmm, wait, what? Nah, this doesn't feel right. Hold on. Let me look into some stuff. Wait, hold on. Hmm. Wait, where can I find something better? Oh, and I'm sure you had to go back and forth so many times in your heart of like, maybe this is right. Maybe that's right. But it, oh, it's or a, you think something's like, that's it. And then you're like, damn, it's not it. Damn not it. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, it's like a hero's journey. And it can be in that it, even though it's obsessive and it does, take but a I lot should of be proof that you energy. should go on the journey, not because you'll end up writing a best selling book afterwards about it, but because the perseverance pays. Yeah, and it can be exciting in a lot of ways. I bet as it you gave look me, back it gave me a that journey, I get to speak about it and help other people. Like exactly. it led to something I would have had no idea. You don't know where it is, but again, it's like we it said, it's like one step in the right direction. Yeah. Mm hmm. The first thing I ever thought about you, I, I met you at FitCon out here in Utah, and I when I saw you speaking on stage, I was just like wow, she has so much passion. And that's what that gave you. If it had been like, oh, you have hypothyroidism, here's the answer, and then fixed it, it's like, oh, it wouldn't mean nearly as much to you. You'd be like, oh, yeah, you just do this if you get hypothyroidism. It's, you know, blah, blah, blah. But because you had to go on that obsessive, deep, obsessive, like, right, like very how proud um, are you of yourself journey. with your transformation? Like, I'm the, the pride that I feel because I did own it right. and do it and get right. it no matter where anyone's at right. with their body image um the sense of self pride the fact that like again right. it would be like just someone here's here's a multi-million dollar company okay that's cool but it's way better that you created it and you work totally. to make it happen that the, the, the benefit is just obviously we all know that it outweighs it when you earn something or you are you know you've you got that yourself it's like i did right. it it just increased my confidence to overcome right. that yeah. And body stuff, body is the body is the ultimate personal development journey. If you oh, can yeah. get the right mindsets in order to transform your body, if this is needed, you know, a lot of us don't need, I don't need a body transformation. Like you don't need a body you already transformation, did. right? <laughs> yeah. We did, we did that. But if you, if it's needed, if it's something that, that pulls you or you just kind of know, you know that there's what a, happened to there's me another, recently. I had, I got inspired by you. Um, actually when we first met in general, like what, what I, and I tell people, I like, I saw your body. I was like, okay, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, right, but here's no. the thing is like, I used to like, what I might eat well and actually exercise, but I was phoning it in a little bit and I wasn't doing mm -hmm. the weights and the things necessary. And you get to a certain age, you can't, you can't get away with that. Like you have to. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be like, all right, I got to get into the weight game here. You know what I mean? And I had to take another level and I'm so glad I did, but it was not like I was crying in the mirror, but I was like, you know what, what I'm doing is, is not kind of getting me to the strength and the level I, I want to be at. And I'm kind of phoning right. this in. So I'm going to yeah. take it a step further. Um, <clears throat> but man, I, that's beautiful. That's a reality check. Right. Yeah. And so often it's like, it's like, we're not supposed to have reality checks. That's mean to yourself. That's not self-loving. It's like, no, like 
I actually want that. And I, what I'm doing right now is not giving me that result. So I want to I'm going to change it. I don't care what right. it is, right? I want to improve right. my knowledge on this. I want to improve my body. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have to. It doesn't mean you're not enough. And that's, that's where the switch I feel like has to really, we really have to watch this in ourselves. It's like, okay, I want that. Like I, it's really personal to me, you know, and there's things, there's things, lots of things that I kind of want that I don't want enough. I'm not going to get them in my life because I don't want them enough. They're not that personal to me. Like, you know, like maybe right now going to Tahiti, it's not, a, that, that sounds cool, but it's not like a major priority in my life to go to Tahiti. If it was, I'd be going to Tahiti pretty soon because I would be all freaking in on that thing because it's personal to me. Like I'm going to freaking get there, you know? And so I think it doesn't mean I'm not enough because I'm haven't gone to T Tahiti yet and I'm not a world traveler. Just like it, it can be fun. And this is, this is the part that I feel like we miss when we delude ourselves with these thoughts of being not enough because we don't currently have that. We got to knock that. We got to do our personal development work, do our self worth work in the background through other things that we do through, you know, journaling and all these little things that I read and do and write. And that's on the back end. That's helping me see who I really am. Right. But then when I want to reach goals, it's so, when you can base it on, oh, I'm freaking doing this. I don't care what it is. If I want to get 8% body fat shredded, I don't want to get 8% shredded. But if I wanted to, I could not because I'm like fat right now. Cause like, I just want to show myself that I can freaking do it. And when I get into that mindset, that's cool. That's exciting for me. You know, maybe I think it's fun. Like for example, um, <clears throat> I feel like this journey of getting comfortable in your own skin with your body and your health is, <sighs> It's such a, it's such a, what I talk about, it's such a pro you move. There's nothing other than all right. the joys of the world that are going to come from you. This it's the ultimate in self love, right? And if you're religious, God gave you this body, stop shitting on it. All right. So mm -hmm. there's that. But at the end of the day, um, and I'm not religious, but again, you know, that's the thing like, hey, this is an amazing vessel. And it is the only meat suit we have, we have to improve it. Now we all have vices, we all have a little thing over here. Okay, no one's saying give up your wine or whatever. But you do we do our best, right. And as Mark Sisson says, sometimes like, look, we what can you get away with? That's kind of the name of the game. Like, you know, you know, you can get mm -hmm. away with a couple mm -hmm. bites of cake and mm -hmm. not be mm -hmm. a mess forever. And I know as well, I can do the same thing. And someone else might not might have to refrain from mm -hmm. that for now until they get to that point. Um, but I think that it, it can be really fun because it's man, there's no more ultimate in like self confidence, self worth by treating yourself well, mm -hmm. right? by by nurturing yourself and bathing it in the right nutrients and all the stuff. And anyone can go back to episode uh, four and hear about paleo primal health and keto and us talking about that. But mm -hmm. like, I think this can be can be so much fun. Like, I, you know, that's why we geek out on this stuff. Like, it's fun when you get into yeah. it. It's just when you're not in it, it feels like, oh, right. what a chore. And here's the thing, like, I agree. Like there are people like my mother does Weight Watchers. Like she has to, she loves tracking the, like this is, that's how she works. She works at her bank mm -hmm. account every day. She's mm -hmm. one of those people. There are some people right. that need, they want to be obsessive about they tracking like their Mac. They she like it. They just like it. <laughs> I yeah. don't like tracking. I don't you know, like it. I'm no. not a fan. Um, But there are times when I need to go. And now I pretty much know the carb content of things. But there are times like right. in the beginning where I just had to learn like, oh, how Reality much is a check. potato? How much right. is that? And kind of gauge some stuff at first. Yeah. But I'm not going to have something where I'm plugging it in every day. But if that works oh, for you really. to keep you yeah. on track and make you excited about your journey and about right. what you're doing for yourself. Oh, man. I, life changer. Right. It's great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think... um. The, the, the key to any sort of personal growth is being able to let go of what you've been doing before that sometimes you want to just slide back into that. Right. So like this constant continual growth for me, like even, even dating for me, it's like, okay, well, I made the decision to end that relationship because I knew that it wasn't in my own best self-interest long-term for my life, for my plan. But man, sometimes it's like, oh, but I miss him. You know, it's like, no, Oh, <laughs> no, Tara. No. And it's the same. It's the same thing with sometimes when you're choosing more for yourself with your habits on how you spend your time. I have a morning routine established. There's plenty of times where I'm just like, oh, I don't really feel like doing that. I would say most of the time, almost all the time, I don't feel like doing my morning routine. I freaking do it anyway. I don't feel like making my bed. I freaking do it anyway. Well, you I don't know, Gabri like Gabrielle Reese, I was interviewing her, you know, years ago, Gabrielle Reese, the oh, famous cool. volleyball player. And she even said, she was like, look, 
I have to argue with myself sometimes every day to go work out, but I do it. And like, I have those moments too, where I'm just like, there's no, I just, and it's not because I'm sore and really should take a day off. It's just because I'm just being lazy. Just being lazy and I don't feel like it. Right. I usually do it anyway, but these are commitments you make. So look, even like the fittest, whatever, uh, volleyball star, she's still, same thing. She's still like, or you, we're all still the same people. It's not like we get up every day and we're like, I can't wait. And sometimes they're like, you've got to just shit. Yeah. Don't think, just do. I always tell myself that cold showers, training goals, all of it. My personal, it's like, don't think, stop thinking about it. Stop. Like as soon as that back and forth starts coming in your head, stop thinking about it. Don't think, just do, get it done. And every, it's like reps, putting it in. It's just like, you know, I ran the Boston Marathon. Well, guess how many, guess how many years over the course of so many years, I wasn't an athlete growing up. I wasn't some collegiate track star runner. I was a overweight teenager mom runner who, you know, was (laughs) overweight most of the time I was running marathons. So to be able to get to the point where I qualified for the Boston marathon, do you know how many days that I did things that I didn't want to do in order to reach a new height? So many, like you know, how day. many, <laughs> imagine right now that on the docket, you've got 21, 20 miles. You got to go run tomorrow morning. You I would, I would, like I would probably you? jump off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel, no, you, you never feel like doing it. You never feel like I would like, if I'm like, no, tomorrow I got to run 17 miles. It's like, Oh gosh. Okay. You know, you're not going to feel like doing that, but if you're going to accomplish something big, you are going to do things that you don't feel like doing. And that is part of personal growth. And sometimes that really, especially when it comes to food, if you can learn this with food, you can do it with anything. I truly think because the food is the most, it's the ultimate test of now, not only do I kind of want to want to mentally slide into my old habits, but I got biochemical urges also pushing me along to go have pizza tonight because I'm stressed out, blah, blah, blah. I just had this. My mom is in a nursing home with, she's got coronavirus right now and I'm already pretty stressed. Like I just had a business partnership dissolve. I'm like trying to pick up all the pieces. I'm single mom, four kids that are now I'm homeschooling while I'm working from home. And my mom has coronavirus and I have power of attorney over her. So I'm already trying to do all her finances and it's a beast if anyone's ever done that. So it's a lot. Right. And on Monday, by the way, also my fridge started leaking everywhere. I've got a repairman. It's just, you know, (laughs) kids are running around like crazy. We're trying, I'm on the phone with the nursing home all day where they're like, we we might send her to the hospital. We're trying to decide calling all my family. What do you guys think we should do? It's just very stressful stressful, you know, and it was the day after Easter. So we have Easter candy everywhere, Reese's peanut butter cups, like all the good stuff. Right. And I did, and I've been, um, I've been intermittent fasting all the whole time with Corona and it's been going really well. And I had a moment where I was like, it, the the thought creeped in like, oh yeah, it's a Reese's night. <laughs> like I, I am totally entitled to have some Reese's cups tonight. It has been a very stressful day. Like I, I, I mean, it was probably the highest my stress level has been, have been in a long time. And I was just like, my thought was, do I really want to ingrain that pattern into myself right now? Do I really? Because the, the first reward time you do it, for the yeah, yeah the emotional right. connection. Like, it, the first time you do it, then you just open that gate and like let's do it again. Now I'm building a new habit. And I was like, no, 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 that's not how I respond to my stress. I'm not doing that. And I didn't, you know. And it felt really good the next day, even though I had that biochemical urge because I was stressed out as a mother. I haven't been sleeping as well because I'm just so stressed about the thing with my mom. So it's like you have that. But biochemical- it would have been. But it'd be okay. Like for example, um, it's good that you didn't do it there. But it'd be okay if. You're not yeah. stressed. It's not a response to that. And you're like, oh, that looks good. I'm going to take a bite of that Reese's because it's not associated, oh, no, no. right? With this, yeah. like, I'm going right. to reward myself. Because I, let, that, me clar- yeah. let me clarify. I did for lunch, a couple lunches, have like a Reese's peanut butter cup as part of my lunch. I didn't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> right, <laughs> well, right, that's right. totally fine. I like want to. This was like, I'm going to have all the Reese's right now as a stress response to help me cope with my emotions. That is very different than yes. just allowing a Reese's cup or two with no emotional ties to it. Bingo. Very different. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that, um, if we can get a mastery of our eating habits, it's very difficult to not do something when you want to do it. So whether that's, you know, texting your old, your ex when you're feeling lonely and missing them and you got your rose colored glasses on and that, that all seemed really great and they're just sitting around and you're just sitting around like, nope not doing it, not in my highest good. Let me get my mind right here. Um, Same with food. If you can get into this practice of being able to 
not do something that is outside of your own best self-interest with something as basic, especially as food, it will infiltrate to every other area of your life. And Will Smith has an amazing motivational. It's my favorite of all he's time. He's very law of attraction. He's, Ugh, he's, I love him. He lives I right mean, down the street, by the way. Literally, he, does lives, he? he lives right down the street from me. And I uh, yeah. talk like a mother. <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> I'd be outside of his house. Will, I love you. I mean, look what he's done with his life. It's freaking amazing. You know, like obviously he knows some stuff. He knows some stuff about manifesting and one, and he, if you just search, um, discipline, self-love Will Smith, he has a speech about discipline being self-love. And he's like, we got this all wrong. We think of discipline as a negative thing, you know, as like little kids is like discipline is bad. No, no, no. Self-discipline is self-love. And he gives examples. It's so beautiful. He's like, you're like, oh man, I really like that girl, but, and we got a really good connection, but that's my cousin's girl. So (laughs) I'm not going to do that, you know? Or I really want that pizza. That looks really good. That's going to taste really good. But I'm trying to do something for my body right now. That's That kind of self-discipline is self-love. When you are exactly. choosing your own future, but you're, you're taking a moment where you didn't feel like going for the run. You didn't feel like doing the cold shower. You didn't feel like meditating. You did feel like eating pizza. You did feel like eating Reese's Cup. You did feel like sliding into old behavior patterns and you didn't do it. You chose change. You did the hard thing in the moment and that moment passes. Those moments will pass. They are fleeting, but they're huge. You know, and I'll say- you so I, proud of yourself. It's so again, these, proud They're yourself. micro commitments. The, 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 that right. was a micro moment with the Reese's because you're already healthy right. and everything. It was just a right. moment of like, I'm doing these yeah. for the wrong reasons. It's, that's not the time to do it. The time to yeah. eat the Reese's is when you're like, I feel like a fucking Reese's. Yeah, and, and I don't care. <laughs> I didn't right. ever think about it again until exactly. this moment. Like, but oh, yeah, you noticed the connection and you were like, <laughs> don't go there. And which each one of these little micro commitments, like again, it, you know, it could just be, I'm done with canola oils. That's the start. Next week, I'm done with grain. No matter how you do it, each little micro commitment, and this is where we talked about before on our uh, paleo episode, which is like, don't try to do everything at once. We're going to like, <laughs> yeah, like, because it takes gangster. <laughs> like, you've done, you've done that. But like, don't join a boot camp, just quit your job, divorce all at once. Because, <laughs> you know, usually that won't work out. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, but right. again, it's like these micro Stack. commitments, they fuel the self confidence, right. this discipline. My discipline with working out is kind of uncompromisable. It's very rare that I'm willing to uh, change my routine. Yeah. Because that is right. the commitment that I made to myself. Because here's the thing right. I know myself. If I don't work out before like 12 p.m. or so, I don't want to. Probably not going to happen. Really going to have to. That's a real forcer. But I don't mm-hmm. totally have to do a super forcer in the morning. And I just know myself. That's why I don't book things and podcasts and stuff like that in a certain chunk mm-hmm. of the morning. Um, mm-hmm. Because I know that if a certain time passes, I'm going to be less motivated to do it. And that's so, right. you know, I keep that commitment and it feels really, really good to do that. Yeah, it does. I, I love Ed Milet. He's one of my favorite. I, I always say Ed Milet is my spirit, my spirit animal. <laughs> but he um, always talks about how self-esteem is built when we keep our word to ourselves. And that, if you want to boost oh, your self-esteem, brilliant. you just keep on keeping your word to yourself little by little by little. And when you know you can trust you, that's when that self-love, it just starts to build. It just comes in automatically because you're like, if you look at your inner child and like your inner child's in there saying like, please, please please let me count on you. And you come in like the hero making the hard choices. Your inner child is like, I love you. I respect you. I want to be like you, (laughs) you know? And like when you have that kind of relationship with yourself, that is self-respect. That is self-esteem. That is positive self-image when you know that you can trust you. And so that's why I don't care if you have your belly hanging down to your knees right now and you're listening to this and you're like, these two skinny blonde bitches, (laughs) whatever. I don't care. You pick one win for yourself and you keep that free commitment and you just watch your self image just start to blossom like a flower because we have been through that we have lived through that and it, it it is that commitment was like I know that I can count on me I know I can and every single time I make that hard choice every time I don't send that stupid text that's beneath me or I don't choose the freaking Reese's or I choose to go for a run even when I you know it felt hard and I'm like man good for me that is when that all blossoms and it starts to just feed on itself like you You've, everyone has probably experienced that when you exercise, it makes you want to eat better. And when you eat better, it makes you want to exercise. And when you, every little win, you make your bed, it makes you want to do something else good. And you meditate. You're like, damn, I'm on fire. I want to do something else good. And it just all starts to stack until you were like, 
I'm awesome. <laughs> I like me. I like being me. And that's, that's the place I'm talking about. That's when it's like, oh, you want to get shredded? You want to build success? Of course you're going to, because you know that you can count on yourself. So it starts it really, truly. I think we came to a beautiful, like full circle thing here in this conversation, because it starts one with you making one decision, one thing today that you are going to commit to, and you are going to do it no matter freaking what. So maybe it's just making your bed, drinking more water, whatever. I- right. Right. Maybe it's like, yeah, I'm going to drink. Well, I'm gonna, I got that one water bottle in my freaking kitchen. I kind of like that water bottle. It's cool. I'm going to drink one of those every single day. I'm going to make my bed every day. I'm going to, whatever it is, I, something, something. I'm going to do 10 squats. I don't care what it is. But once you get, you build that, you stack it. Next. I, this is like, of course I do that. Of course, of course I make my bed, right? Like that's not like a, <laughs> I was like, that's a non-negotiable. Of course I make my bed. Of course I brush my teeth, you know? So like once you can stack that one thing as a, it's now a non-negotiable in life, in your life, then you can build and build and build. And that's when you, that's when you become unstoppable. That's when you can do anything because you know that you follow through on what you said you were going to do. Yeah. Uh- thousand percent. I also want to bring up a couple tangents on body image, which is so I've, I've seen this happen before. Um, okay, let's say you're super overweight. And you know, you're not happy about your life and you're single, right? So I would just ask yourself, like, would you date you not visually? Would you date you with the way that you eat? Like, are you okay with someone that eats that way? Because usually people want a little bit better than they are, right? Or mm-hmm. someone will be like, want someone that's in shape or whatever, well, the in shape guy or girl is probably not going to want to hang out with the smoker who eats a bunch of junk food and never exercises. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be a rare case where someone wouldn't. But I think sometimes it's good to ask yourself, like, what what do I admire? Like what I'm doing, what I'm doing to myself, because that's really what you're doing. Mouth anus. What I'm doing to myself with my health. Would I be okay if the person I was with was doing the exact same things or would want them to do the things I wish I was doing? Yeah. And it's where I'm going with that. Absolutely. That's a great point because it's choice based. Like, so for me, let's say, you know, I'm dating a guy and he's kind of overweight. Like that's definitely not a problem for me. Like I, I'm not, that doesn't bother me at all. But if he was overweight and but he's healthy and he likes to go out in the mountains and totally. nature and he just like, he just has a big appetite. He just eats I'm like totally aligned. But if he's like just eating garbage all the time couch and surfer like, yeah, or couchy, and, like, yeah. He, all he wants to do is like smoke weed and watch Netflix all day. Like, no, thank you. No, thank you. That is not a, for me because it's a, it's a misalignment of values, right? So yeah, like your, your vibe is going to attract your tribe. And if you're like, I mean, sure. If you, that is everyone. Well, and I, this happened to me. So I used to be a cigarette smoker and I was dating at the time. And I literally remember being like, I would never date another smoker. Ever. Like, I would never date a smoker. Like, that was my rule. Like, oh, no, ew, no. Why, why would I want to date someone that's killing themselves? <laughs> Meanwhile, here I am. Smoking. So oh, wow. what was funny is I had in my thought, and this was my head. This was like the bargaining. It was like, well, I'll meet a non-smoker. And if we hit it off and I sense the vibe, then great. That'll be the impetus. Like, using someone else to give me the motivation to wow. quit kind of thing. And then I realized, if I really want to date a non-smoker, I have to just become one. Yeah. And then I wow. did and I ended up dating a guy and, um, I, you know, I'll mention like at some point, like, oh, I used to smoke cigarettes. They're like, oh my God, I would have never dated you. <laughs> He's like, of course you wouldn't. And who was I thinking I was going to fool? Like, oh, like that first kiss, like they weren't going to take, even if I did all of the things, like they weren't going <laughs> to sense something of a smoker. So, you know, again, like I was using bargaining someone else like oh when I get there and then I'll do that or oh if I meet that person then I'll do that no do it first and then it's gonna Mm -hmm. you're gonna attract it because I really didn't want to date a smoker because I wanted to quit myself and again was just trying to using like hoping and then I was like that's not a vibrational match right yeah you really and you realize what you were doing was beneath your standards 100 percent and yeah. that that's another I will give Ed my let credit for this too. He says this all the time is you want to change your life, raise your standards. Right. And so like if you are right now you have seventy five dollars in your bank account, it's because you're kind of okay with that. That's that's one of your standards. I'm not okay with it. That's never I no, like way before it gets to that point, things are gonna change, right? It's it's beneath my standards. I'm not going to be homeless. I will freaking make something happen because that's beneath my standards. Um, I'm not gonna be 
eating McDonald's and 400 pounds. It's beneath my standards. So if you want to change your life, raise your standards, become what you want to attract. And it's like, it's so interesting because when you do that, when you do that, when you start attracting those things into your life, like, let's say you wanted some, let's, let's say you're not in shape and you're a woman and you want a guy that is just this like fitness model, shredded six pack guy. And you just think that would make your life perfect. That would just be so awesome if you could have that guy. <laughs> I'm so going to tell you another. <laughs> I try that out. It's definitely all about the soul, ladies. It's definitely all about the soul. And a lot of times those guys are in a bad way. They Not open, all the they, time. They open their mouth and they become real unattractive. <laughs> yeah. But I will say like once you get, you, if you become that, if you become the shredded person with a six pack, it doesn't become a surprise. And it actually completely changed your paradigm about that thing that you thought you wanted to attract before. But if that's really what you want to want, want in your life, like become it. If I want a very grounded soul centered, um, life partner, I better be freaking grounded and soul centered. Like why that, what, why would he be interested in me if I wasn't? So yeah, I love that. And I love that you, you use that tool in your brain to be like, to, to, to give yourself the awareness of like, Oh, that's my standard. (laughs) That's wait, that's my standard. Oh, I'm going to change that in myself. That's beautiful. So I I love that. I think the other thing I really want to hit in, hit on too, before we wrap this up is just, um, my, I, I, I think about this conversation. I think about like my hypothyroid clients, you know, and I think of people who are like, they're freaking trying. They're like, yeah, Tara. I probably you can try more, all you want. It won't work. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm more on top of my macros and calories and all that stuff than you are. Like I, you know, and I, and I understand that. And what I would say is if you're in that boat, you go on your freaking healing journey. And my question for you is what are you not willing to change? What are you not willing? What are you not willing to let go of? Because I have, I have learned in working with many, many clients, you know, who gets the least results are the ones who secretly don't tell me that they're doing all their old stuff that they used to do before they hired me in addition to what I've given them. So they're doing like two extra workouts a day or they're not eating what I told them to eat. They're just starving themselves still or or they're not taking the supplements I told them they needed. It's like if nothing changes, nothing changes. So I would say if you're in that boat, when you're, you're on a healing journey, like you've got a reason, you know, I've got a client right now that doesn't have her thyroid was removed. She had cancer, you know, like some of us are on healing journey. So you go on your healing journey, girlfriend, you let some, some things might need to be let go of temporarily so that you can heal. You know, maybe you need to not track the macros and calories and be so freaking perfect to weigh yourself and be, have that hyper stress going on in your life. Maybe there need, there is a certain amount of letting go that needs to happen. So I would say if you're you're listening to this and you're like, I'm doing all the things I'm doing all the things I'm trying so hard. I feel like I'm doing so hard. There's probably a certain degree of letting go and a, and a healing walkabout journey that you need to go on. So allow that, allow the letting go, allow shifting, allow change. I have to do it all the time. I think I'm so right in my ways and I'm perfect. And then it's like, Oh, Oh, turns out sleep is way more important. All right. Okay. I got to shift, you know, so it's, it's allowing and letting go. And, and, yeah, and on that note, I think I'm, <clears throat> this is great. And we'll, we'll do, <clears throat> we'll end up doing a thyroid episode at one point. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, but here's the thing. So what she touched on. So a couple things, if you're hypothyroid and you can't resolve it naturally, then yeah, you're, you're, you're going to have metabolism issues until you get that fixed. If you don't have a thyroid gland, particularly, and I just want to, it's a side note here, but yeah. a T4, T3 combo is best choice because they have to be on thyroid hormone replacement because mm-hmm. if you don't have a thyroid, you'll, you'll die without it. Mm-hmm. So the best choice is a T4, T3 combination and sometimes T3 only depending because they don't have the gland and some conversion happens in the gland. So I just wanted to just throw that out there. I've talked a lot about it on awesome. other shows and stuff. Awesome. But also, yeah, so here's the thing. If you're, because that was me, I was doing everything. I was doing Mm -hmm. all the things, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. I had an underlying metabolic disorder that I needed to address. Mm -hmm. So then Mm -hmm. go there. That's your indication. If something's Mm -hmm. not working for months and you are doing all the things, Mm -hmm. then that's time for more blood work. It's time Mm -hmm. for a functional doctor. It's Mm -hmm. time to look at the thyroid and assess it from there because that's defeatist too. When you're Mm -hmm. like, I'm, because I've been there, you're like doing all the things and you keep getting fatter and fatter. And it's Mm -hmm. like, the thing is that 
you think something's wrong with you. I mean, it is. There might be a metabolic, you know, insulin resistance or hypothyroidism going on. But mm-hmm. it becomes, like, awful because you, we feel we should be in control of our bodies. So when we mm-hmm. have a thing like hypothyroidism or another disease that might come in and screw that mm-hmm. up, it's mm-hmm. extra awful to the soul because you are doing all the things. I did work out every day. I was, and it's still, you know, mm-hmm. I was just getting fatter and fatter and fatter. So, yes, that's the time. Like, you got to go heal that, figure that out. And if mm-hmm. something's not working, it's because something's going on in the background. It's not your fault. That's okay. Just go fix mm-hmm. the thing whose right. fault it is. It may that's be hypothyroidism. It may be whatever. Go fix that. Right. That's the journey and the walkabout you need to go on. Mm-hmm. I did it. And I just want to say, I really empathize. I know mm-hmm. how horrible it is to like bend mm-hmm. a leg and feel like you drank a bottle of soy sauce. I know how awful it is to wake up bloated and fat every morning, whether it's hypothyroidism fat or just being fat like mm-hmm. in teenage years or whenever it was. I know what it's like to feel so uncomfortable in your skin and Mm -hmm. clothes and oh my God, I get it. And I Mm -hmm. want everybody to feel the way Tara and I feel now. Um, Mm -hmm. It's totally achievable. It's completely Mm -hmm. achievable. Look, if people can reverse their MS, damn it, you can figure Mm -hmm. out your body. Mm -hmm. We're here to help you. I mean, of course, CoachTaraGarrison.com, she's like, Tara's the master of this if you really want someone to lay out food plans for you and she's got all those automated on her site too um and then if you have a thyroid issue of course yeah come to me or read my book or get my free thyroid Mm -hmm. guide investigate the perseverance will pay the perseverance for you paid with the gym you're at the gym fat and you go okay someone started somewhere i'm gonna learn how to figure out how Mm -hmm. to do the to do this Mm -hmm. bicep curl i don't know what i'm doing (laughs) and you know i had to even recently and i'm an i'm an athlete but I wasn't really understanding of the weights. I am good everywhere else, like, like all the endurance stuff, like you know, like swimming, mm-hmm. whatever. But I wa- and I had to learn. I had to learn. Mm-hmm. I had to go to your IG page. I had to mm-hmm. go look at stuff and go, okay, I these are the things I need to do now to take it a step further. Um, mm-hmm. But perseverance pays every time. Don't give up on yourself. You can achieve the body you want. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about superficially. I mean how good you feel in your own skin. And it's totally yep. there for everybody. And I just, but I do want to say, I really empathize. Like, I know what it's like to just eat and then cry. Literally, mm-hmm. just finish a meal and just sob. And sobbing mm. while eating. I have been there. I have re- It's awful. I totally get it. So I just want to tell you. Yeah. Like, and I think it's bringing up emotions for me now because, and this is the great thing, is that once you're past it, the contrast is so awesome. Like, it never, mm-hmm. it's the gift that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. To this day, I am like, Thank God I did that for myself. Right, right. Thank God I persevered. Thank God I didn't give up. Thank God I kept going. Like, what if I didn't? I'd probably be freaking fucking dead by now, and I'm not even exaggerating. I would probably be dead. And so, you know, I am so grateful, and it's it's wonderful. If you get beyond it, then you'll always look back, and you'll have that contrast that sometimes people who've been fit all their life don't have, and they don't understand. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I understand. We understand. That's right. And you can do it. Yeah. Yep. There's so much joy that comes from that journey. And even though you can't see it right now, because it feels so frustrating Yeah. at the end of the day, you know, when I, when I have, when I did qualify for the Boston marathon, what did I remember? I remember the freaking blizzard I got caught in. I remembered the hailstorm I got caught in. I remembered the hardest moments. And those were the moments where I had that moment in my heart that brought tears in my eyes. Cause it was like, good job. Good for you, girlfriend. Good job. Like, look what you did, yeah. you know, and say same, same thing as, you know, finishing, completing the marathon. That was the hardest race I've ever run. I got dehydrated. My mm-hmm. eyes were closed for like, I just, I was like, I'm probably going to, I'm going to be one of those people that just winds up in the ground on the ground. And <laughs> I'm just going to keep going until I just literally can't anymore. And when I got to that finish line, it was like one of the most sacred moments of my life. Cause I thought nobody knows, nobody knows how hard what I just did was except for me. And that was a sacred moment with myself. And I'm telling you that end goal, you know, I, I, I did have a weight goal when I first lost, I got down to 135 pounds. I just wanted to hit 135. And when I got there, it was the most anticlimactic moment of my life. It was not, it was like, Oh, well, yeah, I'm here now. Of course I know. Cause like by all the, by that time, all the, you know, skills and everything I had developed, it was like, yeah, of course, <laughs> but it was exciting. The joy was in the, oh man, remember that one night when I just really wanted to just go nuts and I didn't good for you. You know, all those, all those little difficult times that you made it through good for you. So if you're in the middle of your freaking journey, you're in the best part. 
You are in the, you are in the climax. You are in the good part of the book. The end is like, meh, meh, meh. okay, well, that was good. But you're in the, you're in it. So I know it doesn't always feel like that. I know it always feels hard, but it's like, trust me, at the end, when you look back on it, it's going to be like, it's, it's where all the action is. It's where all the learning, all the growth, all that happens. So just like, just keep doing it. Cause it's so, you are in the good part. You are in the good part. All right. So we're going to wrap, we're going to wrap things up. Any last words, L? Last words. If you really want to change your body, don't pick up one more damn copy of Shape Magazine, Oxygen for Women, all <laughs> of these workout magazines. They will give conflicting advice on every single page. Stop it. Go to Tara Garris, Coach CoachTaraGarrison.com. Look up the Primal Blueprint. Listen to our Paleo Primal Keto episode. Trust me, we've done it. We've been there. We know the science. I'm telling you right now, it, that really ruined me because yes. it, it, and it often suggests the wrong paradigm that will put you in an insulin resistance type 2 diabetes path, not the fat loss and the fat burning body percentage fat place you want to be in. So that's my last bit of advice. Get rid of the scale. Don't pick up one more fitness magazine ever. Yeah, one literally told hypothyroid women they could lose something like 30 pounds in two weeks by eating they fat did, bombs. They did it on the cover of Women's World magazine <laughs> yeah, when they had, me on, they had me on there oh, in did. my book. And in it, they put like, lose 15 pounds in a week. And I was like, oh my God, you jerks. I should have totally approved <laughs> yes. this article first. And like, that's not what I was saying. But they had like someone else make a comment. And it, it was basically like mis -conf conflicting information in the same oh, article. So, no. you know, stay away from that stuff because yes. go to the people that really know what they're doing and have done it and have been there and so that's sorry that's my long last amen. word on that amen amen thank you so much l guys if you have any comments on this or you want to reach us you can find us on social media l is at underscore l russ on most media channels and she's also l russ.com i'm coach tara garrison we want to hear from you guys we're actually i can't wait to hear from you guys please let us know who you are i want to see who our tribe becomes i want to see what you're interested in i want to see what you want to hear more about if you want to challenge me on something be like tara mm -mm, girl no you know i want to hear i want that kind of feedback so please please or if something touched you and you you're like, man, that, that pulled something out of me. Please let me know. Cause we'll dig into more of those kind of things. So we want to hear from you. We want to meet you. Come find us. Um, and we'll, yeah, we've got, we've got so many more fun topics coming. So happy to have you guys here. Um, and yeah, we'll sign out until, until next week. All right. See you later.